uh, if we could call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. And did everyone have a chance to look at the minutes? Way back when, I've forgotten them already. Okay. You said so, they were fine with you then. No, did I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if we could have a motion on the minutes. So moved. <laughs> No, They're sorry. fine. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, we'll call a vote. All in favor of the minutes, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Declare unanimous. All right. I invited um, Randy to join us, but he said he doesn't do uh, virtual meetings. Wow. Gladly would have come uh, to the meeting to uh, discuss uh, this A&R with us, but he does not uh, do it virtually, so. Maybe um, I should take that position. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, so we have um, a tract of land that's 25 acres, that's currently two parcels. There's a house and a barn on one parcel and a barn on the second larger parcel. So we're taking those two parcels and we're dividing it into three parcels. So lot one uh, extends uh, to the rear and almost doubles in size. Uh, lot two is a brand new lot. Uh, and then the remaining land is uh, just over 21 acres. Uh, both uh, lot one and lot two have the required uh, 200 foot of frontage. Uh, the total on lot one is 232.8 and the total on lot two is exactly 200. Um, they're each required to have uh, two acres minimum, uh, lot one has 2.06, and lot two has 2.03. So I think, now Steve, you had some questions about this? I, I, I sort of vaguely remember the redivisioning of the land, um, but it was, you know, the, the what's drawn in the state GIS thing is different. And I think what's a little confusing to me is some of that was APR land. Um, and so I just, I just was trying to remember the story of how that got to its current configuration. So, so we see a dotted line um, that goes across the back of the barn uh, the furthest to the left goes across and then comes down to Russell Street almost at the existing uh, lot line of lot two. So that that's the existing um, parcel that has the house and the barn and then everything else. So the barn and everything else is the second parcel. Right. And th then the even the back line, uh, if you look at that, um, yeah, the, the, the A, B, C, D, uh, where it's got the notation proposed boundary line agreement along line between point A, B, C, D. Okay. Yeah, what does that mean? Not really sure. It's some kind of uh, agreement between uh, Mike and Kim and, uh, and the Benjamins. I, I, I've never seen this kind of notation before. Uh, so I don't really know, but it really, um, what we're concerned with is the two building lots. Uh, so um, the next time Randy is in, uh, we can ask him about uh, this uh, ABCD and, and when that appears and why that appears. If you, if you look at what I've got, it's the, uh, or what I sent around was there's a, I, I assume those green areas in that uh, mass GIS map I sent, that those green areas are the APR land. Um, 
And then, you know, they're a little approximate, so they didn't exactly, on the more northerly one, did not exactly match the boundary of that piece of property. But then there's like APR land just to the south of that, which extends a little farther. I'm guessing that they're trying to go along the edge of the APR land, which would make yeah. sense to me. Yeah. That C, C then represent, uh, ABC then represents oh, yeah. drawing a line there. So I, yeah, I just, I was trying to understand that whole, what the story was there. And I just, I may have seen some of this in the ZBA, but I just don't remember exactly <clears throat> how that, how that played out. It does look like that line following the APR line. Which would make sense because otherwise they'd have to, they'd have a whole different set of problems to deal with. So, Right. But I, I guess you're right, Dana, for our purposes, it doesn't really much matter. <laughs> it, I, I, it's good to know, um, I, you know, every, every opportunity to learn something um, about this whole uh, surveying business is, is uh, knowledge worth having, I think. Yeah. Well, it's too bad Randy's not on. He, he could have helped us, but. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> um, as far as what we're concerned with, I don't, it, it, it seems like there are no issues with it. Right. So, so at the required frontage and are that there's enough frontage, that there's enough lot area, uh, that the frontage is not illusory, that it's, uh, there's nothing obstructing the frontage. Uh, and, uh, that's pretty much, uh, what an A and R is. And then how do, we, how do we know there's nothing obstructing the frontage? Uh, well, I, I, drove by it, but um, like, like sometimes uh, you can find, a, like uh, across from Rose O'Hagan, are you familiar with the land on Route 47 uh, as you're uh, leaving Sundle and on the right hand side? So the, there's, there's actually, there's a road uh, going up and accessing some lots up there, but then there's a whole long, uh, uh, you know, couple hundred feet of frontage that's ledge, you right. know, land could come before us uh, that would show frontage, but that would be illusory because there's no way to access the land through the frontage. Kind of like uh, the road slot, <laughs> where you are, Sarah. <laughs> right, exactly. I was just thinking of that. <laughs> Illusory frontage. Yeah, uh, the, it, it's more of a concern um, in coastal areas uh, where there are uh, water obstructions. Uh, and I think there were, there's some case law uh, about properties that are inaccessible uh, for six months of the year because of flooding. Um, and so, uh, that's that's what the law is concerned with is making sure that the property any property can be accessed through its frontage and in this case it's absolutely flat uh, been farmed for a hundred years and it, there's there's nothing illusory about it okay well I would move to endorse this uh, ANR plan Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mo moved and seconded. Any more discussion on uh, the Jeffrey Hubbard ANR? My only further discussion would be that we should keep in mind, you know, it looks like they could create a bunch of backlots in here, you know, so. Yeah, and, and I, he actually, Jeff called me up and said that he was annoyed uh, that he was required to have the two acre lots because he uh, is farming and is trying to farm as much of the land as is absolutely possible. And his intention is actually uh, to keep uh, the rear portion of one and two uh, kind of uh, remaining uh, as, as farmland, but he's required 
uh, to draw it up this way. So he can have an easement, a farming easement for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, okay. Well, why, is he, why is he required to have the second lot? So he, he wants to build a house. Oh, okay. He, he, this, it's his grandmother's house uh, is, the, is the box uh, next to the two barns. Um, and he doesn't want to live in his grandmother's house. He wants to build uh, his own house, but he is farming all of the land. Oh, I uh, and so uh, that's, that is what it is. Mm. So, he, well, I guess if he owns it, then he doesn't even need an easement, but uh, for to do the farming. But if he right. sells so, it, so it, it's actually his his mother and his aunt uh, are the Benjamins that uh, own it. So, what agreement they have with him for this lot, I don't know. But he he's the one that's farming the land, okay. and his mother and his aunt own the land. Okay. Well, he was annoyed, but you explained to him that we don't want we don't want a whole bunch of tiny parcels with little houses. Yep, all I, over the place. Yeah. Uh, explain that to him. Yes. Okay. I guess like longer term, so looking decades down the road, does it pose a threat that he could or that this property could be subdivided by someone else? It seems like we're good right. now. Okay. So that's now. that's why we try uh, and work uh, with the conservation commission. And they, they um, have uh, quite a large nest egg uh, and they are identifying um, parcels in jeopardy uh, of development and, and looking to uh, approach landowners. They frequently do approach landowners uh, and enter into agreements uh, to expand uh, the APR land. So uh, the, the opportunity, given that this is 21 acres, uh, the uh, it, it is seems to me like a, a pretty good candidate, um, but they have uh, some kind of hierarchy uh, in their evaluation of parcels and the threat to parcels. And I think that they might wait uh, until an appraisal has been done before they get involved. If I'm reading, if I'm reading the remaining frontage. Unless they go to back lots, I don't think they could do more than two more lots, right? Right, but but they could do, they could easily put a subdivision road in and, right. and put a ton of lots in there. Right. So put ten lots in there anyway. Right. Well, they'd have to get it approved and all the rest, but right. Yeah. And they'd have to put in uh, two. Uh, low income lots. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, here's what I propose if someone would make a motion um, to. I move that Dana signs for all of us. <laughs> That's second. The I'm looking for. Is there a second? I seconded. Okay, and and that just just logistically, if I go in and sign the mylar on behalf of the board, that's all that's required by law is the chairman's signature. So excellent. I was wondering how we would handle that. <laughs> in there and deal with it. So, all in favor of doing that? Aye. Okay. So, can we have committee updates? Has the ZBA met? No, not since not since January. Steve, you actually you look like you're outside gazing up at the stars. It's, no, uh, next time I'll have stars up there. Well, see, see what happens. My hand kind of disappears. No, don't put your hand up. It it, it completely <laughs> blows the illusion. <laughs> where where are where is that, Steve? That's in Peru. It's a place called Chanquillo. Wow. Uh, this this is close to the summer solstice or their winter solstice. So the sun is rising right over that far um, tower. And then it shifts <laughs> across those towers over the course of the year. Are those towers Incan or? No, this is, uh, Peru is, this is a 
pre-Incan culture, about 3,000 wow. years ago. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so way, way old. <laughs> wow, very cool. Yeah, they're trying to get uh, they're trying to get world heritage status. It's one of the oldest uh, one of the uh, it is the oldest astronomical site in the Americas, as far as I know. Wow! But they haven't gotten it, their world heritage, and nobody almost nobody knows about it. So. Hmm. Very cool. So you were has this DVA met? No. no Historic DVA. commission. Uh, no historic commission, although we did uh, we did meet with the was it pathways or what was what was that joint meeting of all the different yeah that was uh, it, but that it was, was a little powwow we, we just had a meeting with all the different stakeholders in the park to talk about the you know um, I think that might have been just before our previous meeting, so may, maybe that's even. Um, but uh, oh, the other thing was that I did meet with the town center committee. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, and that actually turned out to be nothing about the town center. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, it was it was about uh, the proposal for uh, some complete streets projects. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of one of which is on uh, South Main, and one which is on. Uh, um, Silver, South Silver. South Silver. And the third one was up in uh, um, Falls Road. It? Falls Road, thank you. Yeah, I, I heard about that one. Um, I was speaking with, um, uh, what's a town administrator's name? Jeff, right? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I, I had a uh, call just to check the status on that. Uh, it was uh, after a day where a, a Lotus drove by at a pretty ripping speed and I was like, hey, what's uh, what's going on? Um, seems great. It seems like they're, they're doing quite a quite a bit there. Um, the one reservation that I had was I know that they're putting up a speed sign that will like, tell the passerby what their speed is. That works on people who are unwittingly speeding, uh, just not aware of how fast they're going. And then for other people, it sort of encourages them to get the high score. So one of the things I was speaking with Jeff about was making sure that it's logging data, not that you can record license plate numbers, but if you know that there, there's a decent amount of speeding 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, then, uh, you know, a police officer is more likely to show up. He wasn't certain about that. So only saying that um, so that if you happen to be in the room and uh, there's discussion of this later in the summer, um, hopefully that's the, the type of device they get. So this was more about improvements to the different these different streets to allow a more the complete streets, which allows bicycle lanes and different things. So, um, so the, the, basically the meeting was to talk about them and kind of order them in priority. I think um, South Main and Falls Road rose to the top. They're also the cheaper projects. It looked, it wasn't clear um, based on the discussion, how far down we'd be able to get on uh, South Silver from from uh, Old Amherst Road. There was some discussion that it might be complicated because where the placement of where the drains are and different things might might actually require more work than had been anticipated in the in the proposal. So um, the the thought was to go after the first two projects and you know com completing the sidewalks and bicycle lanes and things there. Um, as specified and then do what as far as is as is possible down uh, South Silver um, given the possible complications that might make it a more expensive project than anticipated. So we'll see how that goes. I, Sarah, the people in the meeting were not even that clear about what status that proposal is at at this point. It, it has not definitely been funded. It's it has been. No, it was funded. Okay, that I I thought it was well, kind those, of funny because people were going back and forth whether it's really been funded or not. But um, okay. no, it was funded. All right. Those three those three projects as at the price that they were on a, on the original prioritization plans. Yeah. Uh, so I started looking at the the aerial views of South Silver, and it was pretty clear that's going to be hard to fit all that stuff in there. Um, once you, 
you're going to try to add a sidewalk and space between the sidewalk and the road and bicycle lanes and all the rest, some of those driveways and houses are pretty close on the road. So either you're going to be really moving the position of the road in order to make this fit, or you're going to be getting up people's driveways to the point that I think they're going to be pretty upset. I mean, I, I could see where the line would actually cut through where people are currently parking their cars from the, the Google map, the Google set, um, you know, aerial imagery. So we'll see what happens with that. You know, that um, when that, it was really, um, there was never anybody, I never heard anybody asking for sidewalks on South Silver. Really? Okay. That, that came from FERCOG, you know, they, they, the, the, the transportation planning people at FERCOG kind of surveyed the town and they came up with that as um, a project, you know, well, but. The notion here, at least in the proposal, was that the sidewalk would provide walking access up towards um, 116 where they could go to the bus stop and right. that fit the kind of complete streets kind of idea. Right, and it connects to existing ones. Um, right. But if, if you look at, you know, if you go to Google Maps and look at how much that's going to spread over existing driveways, it, it may be within the right of way, but I think people are going to be pretty upset when they realize how, how much they're going to lose from their current driveways. Yeah, and like I said, like we've never had anybody from South Silver approach or, or you know, so it, it, it wasn't coming from the community. Interesting. Okay. So, um, hmm. <laughs> all right. So that was uh, Steve's committee reports. Sarah, do you have any additional committee reports? Um, let's see. The, uh, I can't remember. I think at, since our last planning board meeting, we had our final community preservation committee meeting. Um, and we, we moved uh, eight articles to town meeting um, and recommended them all unanimously. Um, so, um, Every, you know, everything that I, I had mentioned before the projects were up, we added um, one uh, for the p possible archaeological dig if it was necessary, just to get those funds appropriated if we ever were in a position where we, you know, we need to do the, the, the dig in the park. And um, so... Um, we, I think we had the last meeting before everything shut down. <laughs> it was like the last night there were real meetings. So, so we kind of wrapped up our business for the year. Except um, once, once this whole public health crisis hit, um, the, the, the head of the um, Community Preservation Coalition um, sent out an email saying, did you know that you can use CPA funds for um, rental assistance? Um, and um, Peter Jessup um, got that too and was writing to me. He, he's very interested in trying to do that. Um, and I talked to Jeff about it and Peter about it and Jeff's well, you know, obviously the, the, the housing authority would have to administer it. We wouldn't be able to administer that ourselves. So Jeff talked to the Franklin County Housing Authority. Um, well, actually, I think they contacted him because they were also thinking along the same lines, you know, and I think, you know, a bunch of towns are thinking about doing that. So um, we're waiting to hear back from them. It, it, it may be that we do some sort of emergency. Um, we have time since town meeting got postponed. That it, it, it's possible. I don't know. I think now they're not. They they haven't heard from the housing authority. But it's possible we might do try to do add something 
that's uh, rental assistance for people who are um, in trouble right now. I don't think we can do mortgage, you know, because it's, it, you know, of all the affordable housing uh, regulations. Mm. But, um, and I have no um, idea how, what the amount would be, or I'm just, I just, um, Peter Jessup is leading that, that effort. Okay. So we did, we, we have our uh, zoning changes that are being proposed for a uh, town meeting that is now delayed. And we have our town election also delayed. So um, we uh, had hoped to have a full complement of members for our May meeting and now uh, the election uh, will not happen before our May meeting. So. Uh, so it's just the four of us until uh, the town election. Does the de delay raise any questions about the timing of our public hearing? Right. There... I think the, the I, I completely uh, uh, understand that the the time between the public hearing and the vote is uh, whatever, 45 days or 60 days or something, but somewhere in that uh, edict from uh, the governor that was uh, the, uh, the uh, memo that we got from town council, uh, it says that those uh, restrictions are waived. Okay. All right, that's all I got. Anyone else? No. <laughs> Good. We're expecting to hear, uh, you know, somebody running into the room and the baby about to be born or something, but it hasn't happened. I don't know. <laughs> who, who are we waiting for to do that? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got my head on a swivel. So we'll see. Right now it feels like it's, it's never going to come, but we'll see. <laughs> What's your plan, Steve, to... Just to, to like get to the hospital and stuff? Yeah. Are you allowed in? Uh, yeah, thank God, because I've spoken with a couple of people who actually are also allowed in, but then they have to, they're, you know, they're the only person and they have to get out two hours after the baby is born. Um, but I, I will be the only person, other than Molly, of course, and the baby when he gets there. Um, but I'm allowed in, uh, once I'm in, I, if I, if I leave, then I can't come back. So mm -hmm. they're trying to get people out as quickly as possible. If it's natural birth, um, we may be there for less than two days. Normally it's two. If it's a C-section from what I understand, it's uh, still going to be four days. So, um, but they just want people in and out. Um, that being said, I've been tracking um, Cooley Dickinson's data. I don't know if, if you all have seen it, but they're posting the amount of coronavirus cases at Cooley Dickinson, updating it every day. And uh, the numbers look, I don't know if you could say good, that's probably not the right word, but uh, certainly getting better and there's not many cases in, uh, in Cooley Dickinson at all. I think we're down to 12 or, or 13 um, patients in the, in the hospital with like five in the ICU. So it's not even a few weeks ago, it was a bit more intimidating, but now we feel pretty solid. Yeah. But we're going to be in, in masks and doctors are going to be in masks and, uh, and shields, uh, face shields and all that stuff. So it's not how we imagined it, but it's also really hard to not be really happy and excited. So, A friend of Beth's, her, uh, uh, her granddaughter was born in the bathtub because the, the labor was so short. <laughs> So not not to put any panic in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm nervous to change diapers, let alone deliver a kid. Uh, but uh, no, if if it were to happen that fast, that would that would probably be a good thing. Because uh, the last thing you want is like you know we're afraid of having one of those like 48 hour deliveries with you know with with 9.5 and 10 pound uh, babies in the room. Maybe this is something your your moms can relate to, but we don't we don't want that. No offense. Yeah. <laughs>
You know, her, uh, her friend's granddaughter, I think, was uh, it was a 45 minute labor, which probably was good. So they got, you know, they just didn't have time to get to the hospital and all that. So. Wow. Oh, my God. Well, uh, yeah, I would take that if given. I just uh, read that there's been a run on diapers, so I hope that you've stocked up. Um, no need. We're going, uh, we're going disposable, uh, which a lot of people understandably are like Ugh, really grossed out by, but uh, we're going to save about 2000 bucks. Uh, modern diapers are, uh, um, uh, reusable diapers are really thoughtfully designed and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. My dad is convinced we'll last two weeks, but <laughs> we already invested in it. So I think we're in it now. But yeah, in terms of like formula, uh, I bought, uh, you know, hopefully we won't need any formula, but I already bought, uh, I bought some, hopefully the right kind. Um, but uh, we already bought some and stocked up just, uh, just kind of planning for a run on that. Crazy times. Yeah. And are, do you have to travel? It, 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 I mean, for your, for your uh, job, have you had to go to New York? Oh, what, what job? Uh, like, like every, so uh, yeah, I was in the hospitality industry. That job disappeared uh, a few weeks ago. I'm on, I'm on furlough. So mm -hmm. I had to go. Uh, thank God I am still on health ins insurance. Uh, they, they still have health insurance for, for us for the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And they're under the false impression that the industry will come back. So I have an interview tomorrow. We'll see what happens. So it'll, it'll come back. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll come back in, in time, but um, I'm not optimistic that it will happen within the next, you know, if, if, if that, if my company, so my company had probably 160 employees and now they're down to 60 and those 60 are earning half of what they did. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a company that was doubling in size. Um, it, it had doubled in size in the last year. So they were under massive growth and now all of a sudden are on, you know, they, they'll, they'll barely squeak by um, until this is over. So that, that company was supposed to be my meal ticket, but it is gone. <laughs> And I accept that. But yeah, every everybody has to deal with with something crazy now. So it's it's really hard to be upset. All right. I guess uh, we'll call it then. Anyone got this anything is, else? This is our shortest meeting ever. <laughs> Seven thirty four. It was it was so so uh, efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Am I allowed to to motion to uh, have these always over Zoom in that case? <laughs> you may not want that because there will be a baby crying. But well, that, it means we can never have Randy. <laughs> I I like sitting around the table. Well, we could have, we could certainly have people zoom in, right? Yes, you yes. can attend remotely. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, guys. Everybody stay, uh, stay, stay healthy. Well.